Hello everybody, welcome to episode 10 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. It's good to be back. I have lots of fun adventures to share with you guys. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I guess I can start with a little bit about who I am in case this is your first time. Um, I am the dyer behind Paper Crane Yarns, which is my own uh, hand dyed yarn business. I also make project bags and I'm coming to you from my personal local yarn store. This is my retail space. That I'm sitting in and my studio space is right over there. I'm hopefully opening in January of 2022. This is my post Rhinebeck episode so I'm definitely a little bit in the brain fog territory. I also because it was so cold and rainy and I drove for like 32 or 30 you know four hours I caught a little bit of a cold so I probably sound a little nasally today but I'm here. I don't even know where to start honestly. Um, it's been quite the adventure since I was here last. Yep, I, my husband and I went up to New York for Rhinebeck, um, the New York Sheep and Wool and India Entangled Festivals. It was amazing. We were there for Friday and Saturday. Friday was Indy. Saturday we went to Sheep and Wool. Um, we didn't go to Sunday. I wish that we could have, but we are all the way in Alabama and we did drive. So I had to come back eventually. Um, yeah, so... Again, I don't even know where to start. There's so much amazing stuff to share with you guys. So I think the way that I'm going to do this video, um, I did record some vlog footage, sort of my first time doing that, and I am not a professional by any means. So I, I was very much enveloped in what was going on around me, you know, as you should be. So I didn't record as much as I kind of expected or hoped to, but um, A, I was very shy to do it, and yeah, actually the couple of times that I that I tried to record vlog footage, knitters are the sweetest people on this planet because, you know, my husband and I are sitting there and we're holding the camera out in front of us and I have footage of me, of, 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 of like people coming up and saying, oh, do you want us to take your picture? And that happened over and over. And I had to kind of shyly say like, oh, I'm just recording a video. Don't mind me, but thank you. So. Anyway, all that to say, I do have some vlog footage to share at the end of this video, so if you're just here for the Rhinebeck vlog, then skip on over to the end, but um, hopefully you'll stick around. So yeah, I've got some footage from that. I have the biggest <laughs> yarn haul. I, you know, that word, that word, you guys, but it's okay, because that's what this is. I mean, I literally drove to New York to buy yarn, so yeah, in this case, that is applicable, I think. So I've got a lot of that to share, but I do also have just some regular um, podcast stuff like my works in progress to show you. So why don't we start there <laughs> and uh, then we can talk about the Rhinebeck Adventures a little bit more. Um, I'll try to put like a timestamp down below if you just want to hear about Rhinebeck Weekend. Okay, let's start with some works in progress. So I don't... I only have one thing to show you, or maybe two, that I was working on previously. I have two entirely new cast-ons. These are essentially all shawls um, and one sock, which, you know, I'm sure you could take it or leave it with seeing it. I will show you because that was my, that was kind of my socializing knitting when I was in New York. So this is just a vanilla sock. Um, I tend to go with the Volenvine vanilla sock pattern. That's what I've always used. This is Barocco Comfort. It's acrylic and nylon. There's no wool in this, which, uh, yeah, I didn't know that when I bought it, and I thought I would be disappointed, but it's actually really nice. I like the fabric that it's making, and it's really comfy in the hands. I've got my little um, Simply Serving stitch marker. This is an adorable dumpling. Yes, very cute. Hopefully that's, there we go. And yeah, this is a self-striping I believe the colorway was Wanaka. So yeah, I I got a good bit done while I was socializing. Thankfully, this is simply stockinette, so can't really mess that up too much. I don't have the other one with me to compare to see where I started the heel turn, but I think I still have a little a little ways to go. And I made a huge mess out of my uh, yarn ball while I was traveling. Um, you know, say lovey. So that's my sock. That's probably my most boring project to share with you. But, you know, you always need something small and light that you can travel with. Here is a work in progress of a different sort. So I'm a 
fairly disorganized knitter. I mean, I tend to use PDF patterns on my phone and I'll make notes on my phone with my finger and they, they never look right. Um, I print out paper patterns and then I immediately lose them or my pets tear them apart. So yeah, I decided to get organized with a binder. And if you are not already doing something like this, then you should give it a, a thought because this has already been such an amazing idea. If I didn't have this, I think that my New York trip, my road trip knitting would not, would not have gone nearly as well. If I was trying to knit what I was knitting with my phone, it would have been a whole different experience, I think. So yeah, um, I'm filling this, I've got my indie tickets, and then I'm filling it with patterns and um, I'm, I'll eventually maybe put some like stitch dictionaries and stuff in here, but yeah. Can you tell that I like this color? Because I don't think it's obvious enough. So this is a project that you've already seen. I don't know if I've put on any more rows since you saw it. You probably, I probably haven't, but I did, however, slip it onto scrap yarn because I needed the needles that this was on. But in case you have not seen this, I absolutely love this shawl. It's turning out really well. It is the Spring Sampler Shawl by Nordic Yarn Imports. It's made with Sadness Garn Tin Lina, and that is a linen blend yarn. There's five different colorways involved, and it's pretty much just huge stripes. Uh, like I've said a million times now, easiest pattern I've ever done and probably ever will do. Uh, yeah, and it's huge already, so I'm only at the halfway point. I'm like basically the exact halfway point, so it's gonna be double this, which is which is cool. I wanted a nice big wrap, and this one's very lightweight, so it'll be good all year long, and you can use all kinds of color combinations. And you, uh, this is the, the yarn that the pattern calls for, but you could really use anything that's a fingering weight. I mean, you could use whatever if you wanted to adjust your stitch count or have a, something really big, but if you just have like, you know, three to five colors of, of fingering weight in your stash, then you should consider doing this project because been really fun and yeah it's looking beautiful so I did feel bad to put it on scrap yarn but I pretty much only have one of each of my needles I know some people have like you know different brands of each size and maybe one day I'll get to that point but right now I basically just have my Haya Haya needles my interchangeable sets in the small and the large this one's been put uh, on the sidelines for now but only temporarily it's okay yeah I'm on the navy color right now and you can watch previous videos if you want to go a little bit more in depth with this project, but yeah, it's kind of all she wrote with this one. So my next project is something that I talked about working on or casting on um, in the end of my last episode. I already have the mohair wound up and um, you can see at the end of my last video, I ended up winding my yarn right after I left. So. Normally, I am a very monogamous knitter, I swear. I keep saying that and then I pick up more projects and I think it's just being so wrapped up in the knitting world, you know, being at my studio, being online, going to Rhinebeck. It's just, everybody's tempting me all the time and it's not really with their projects. It's just, I see people knitting and I'm like, well, I gotta knit now. So uh, I do have more projects on the needles right now than usual and they're basically all shawls and all of my future knitting is basically shawls for the time being. So I guess I'm a shawl knitter now. Um, yeah. So that is my birds of a feather. You're probably like, Ashley, you haven't even said what you're knitting yet. Well, that's what it is. It's birds of a feather by Andrea Mowry. And this is where I'm at. See, there's kind of some loose ends that I haven't woven in yet, but but yeah, I think this is looking very gorgeous. This is the right side that you're seeing. It has this lovely ridged spine that goes all the way down the shawl, which I think is beautiful. And yeah, I've been calling this like a wisp because it's so lightweight and drapey and the shape of it, it's just, it's gorgeous. Um, I am using for the mohair, this is the Pearl Soho Tussock in the Pink Fog colorway. It was left over from my Sheer V sweater. And for the Merino Single, I'm using uh, one of my hand dyed yarns. This is my Sea Thing colorway. 
it might be a little blown out, but it's really like a very minty blue with brown speckles. And yeah, so that's what I'm using. Hopefully I have enough of everything. I definitely have enough of the merino. Um, hopefully I have enough of the mohair since it was leftover. I don't want to have to buy more, but we'll see. I'm not quite sure how far into the pattern I am, but um, yeah, I've made some good progress. So the stitch marker I'm using, I picked because it matches my project and I know that we all like to do that. It's from Grizzly Knits, Tracy. So yeah, it's got a little pink and a green gem and I think it matches my project really well. So that is my Birds of a Feather by Andrea Mowry. And oh, before I forget, if you've seen Coraline, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Coraline is one of my favorite movies. And there are those two ladies, and I looked up her name and now I can't think of it, but the two ladies who live downstairs from Coraline, the shorter one, doesn't this make you think of her? <laughs> so I just kind of picked these yarns because I had them in my stash and they matched the project. And then as I was knitting it, I was like, oh, okay, this kind of makes me think of like little mints that you would get you know, in a restaurant or like on a boardwalk. And the longer I knit it, the more I realized it looks like that lady from Coraline. And now I don't know how to feel about my color choices. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> it's not bad. It's very pretty. I feel like this will be a good um, little tea party shawl. <laughs> I definitely would love to make it in some darker colors though, something that I would probably wear more frequently. But yeah, it's lovely. It's so soft, so. Loving this project, no regrets. Okay, so the last work in progress that I'm going to share today is Shawography by Stephen West. Yes, I had no intention of knitting this project and the Thursday night before it released the first clue, I was laying in bed and I seriously got like this whim to make it. So I purchased the pattern. I skipped to the end of clue one video to help me pick some colors because I had given zero thought to color choices. I didn't buy anything. Um, I was gonna work purely off of my stash and I, I kinda wanted to see how things would play together as best as I could since I, was, I didn't have a lot of time to give it thought because yeah, my husband and I were about to go to Rhinebeck. I think that's how the timeline went, but yeah. Um, so I came over to my studio and I went through my my yarn wall here and if you have seen my previous episodes there have been a couple of episodes where I've shown some merino singles in like a purple and, and gray fade kit and I was begging <laughs> for pattern suggestions and I got a lot of really good ones that I was considering and then I decided to do shawography um, so I've actually used about half of those colors now I'm left with a few of the colors like like I still have this one and uh, maybe one other. So I think I'm using three in total from that kit that I dyed. I cast on shawlography. So that said, um, I've only knit to the end of clue one. I haven't started on clue two yet because I really wanted to show my clue one first. And you know, it's been out for a couple weeks, so I'm sure you've seen it by now, but if you would like to skip it, and not look at it, then please just skip ahead a couple of minutes um, to avoid any kind of spoilers if you're not interested. But if you don't mind and you want to see it, then here we go. So yeah, this is in my Lila Styles Labyrinth bag, which is basically the only project bag that I own that wasn't made by me. So I'm sure you've seen it quite a few times by now since I got it, but I love it and contained within is my gorgeous shawlography. I have zero regrets casting this on. If you're still on the fence, I, I'd say do it. This was my first Stephen West and his instructional videos are amazing. I mean, I have, I'll say like, I haven't learned anything new yet from the video and I think he writes a, a lot of complicated patterns with techniques I haven't tried. Like I've never done brioche and I think if I, were to start, I would start with him because I know that he would be a good instructor. And now having read through this pattern, I, I'm so glad he made the video because it's pretty straightforward. 
but there are certain techniques that, while they're not difficult, they're kind of unique, and he shows you exactly how to do them. So he's very generous with like that in instructor aspect that he puts forward. So yeah, if you're afraid, if you're even like a new knitter, I would say give this a shot. Um, just follow along with his video and, and you'll certainly get there. So I do wanna encourage you if you're not so sure. Okay, my color palette. So yes, I did use three of the skeins that I had from my fade kit. I don't think I'll be able to hold all these up together, but here are the three yarns that I had dyed and needed a pattern for that I'm using for this project. Um, some of these, this one I, I had to split into two skeins, I think, or two cakes. Um, this one is my sort of main color for this section, so I've already used a ton of this one. And so yeah, I've got these three purple shades. These are all uh, paper crane yarns, hand dyed yarn. And these were kind of one-offs. I was just wanting to dye a kit for myself, so these don't have these don't have colorway names, but I think I'm going to replicate them because it, to me this is like the perfect pink because it's slightly blue and this is an amazing purple um, and then this is sort of like a gray purple almost black it's like a very off black color so I, I do love all of these together and then <laughs> for my pops of color because you can see like this would have been incredibly similar it's kind of speckled but and I mean, I'm sure that on the, with the whites, it looks almost identical. It, it is slightly different, but I'm so thankful I did not go with the full five colorways that I created for that kit. It would have been almost just pointless. Um, so I have this color and this is one of my hand dyed yarns that I do sell. This one is Salt Lamp. It's getting very blown out, but it is like a peachy orange with burnt orange speckles and it's variegated so there's a lot of like cream and peach that's incredibly bright there you go so this is one of my pops of color and then my favorite this is one of my favorite colorways this is my chrysalis colorway so this is like a a very springy green with blue and uh, then some golden speckles. So it's playing really well with these purple colors. It's a wonderful pop of color amongst all of these very similar shades. So it provides some beautiful contrast. So yeah, okay, those are my colors. <laughs> and here is my finished clue one. And it's not been blocked yet, but it should come across pretty well. So you can see my main color for now, this color B, it's that darkest color that I have. But when you, when it blocks, you're going to see all of these very bright pops coming through. So I'm really loving the way that it's turning out. I think this will be very wearable for me. And uh, yeah, I don't know which section is my favorite. They're all beautiful. I love these little slip stitch Vs that come through and then these I-cord loops are really fun. This part was the only part that was difficult on my hands. It was very finicky. Um, and I was doing this on my way back from Rhinebeck, so I was exhausted, but I finished this in the car. So I got this whole thing done essentially in just my Rhinebeck trip. But yeah, I think it's gorgeous. I can't wait to start on Clue 2. I've already looked ahead and um, <laughs> Clue 3 is coming out tomorrow, so I'm certainly behind, but that's okay. Uh, it's not a race, as I think he says. So yeah, it's beautiful. I am very happy that I decided to do this. And this is the project that I stole my needles for. So these were the needles on my spring sampler shawl, and now they're my shawlography needles. <laughs> I thought this would be a really pretty yoke for an interesting sweater. I, I wanna hear if you guys are knitting shawlography. I know it's really been like the talk of the town <laughs> recently, but it is, it's a really fun project and the community around it is really cool. I love seeing how much variety there is out there with this project. And yeah, again, this is my first Stephen West knit along, my first Stephen West pattern. And I've just 
really been very happy with it. So um, I would say even if you're not doing it in the mystery knit along sense, this is still an amazing pattern. And if you're waiting to see it all knit up and so you can have a better idea of your colors, or maybe you're just waiting for one reason or another, um, I'm looking forward to it for you that you get to knit this because it's really been fun. It's been very involved, but um, in the best way. So it's a very entertaining knit, especially when I've been doing like a sea of essentially stockinette and garter projects. It's been like knit stitch after knit stitch. So this is really keeping me interested and it definitely helped the, the road trip time go by while I was in the car. Yeah, I guess I can move on, but I just love looking at it. It's so squishy. I think it's looking gorgeous. My favorite thing to do is to, to like pull these apart so I can see all the colors. I've done it so many times that it's almost like it's been blocked because originally it was very squished together and I was actually almost disappointed because I thought like, oh, I have all these beautiful colors in here and they're not there. So every time I would knit it, I would just sit there and do this. And I think I've already kind of helped some of the stitches to bloom by doing that. I'm going to just swiftly segue into Rhinebeck because I have so much to share. Um, I definitely had an amazing time. I can't wait for next year. The trip, we drove overnight. I drove for the first like nine hours straight. Um, I was pretty impressed with myself. I had been up since 4 a.m. and at the end of it, I was, I was ready for my husband to take over, but I wanted to let him get some sleep because this trip really wasn't for him, it was for me, and I just wanted to make it as painless for him as possible. <laughs> so I, I drove for a while, he took over, um, we made it, we made one stop in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for some coffee, and uh, we just kind of walked around. It was gorgeous. It, but the second that we got out of the car in Pennsylvania, it was like a whole other realm of existence. It was amazing. The streets were lined with golden leaves. It was chilly. It was just beautiful. Yeah, Thursday was spent recovering because that's the day we got in. And so, of course, the excitement of Friday morning of Indie Untangled, my first Indie. So it's about a 30 minute drive. We were some of the first people there. And uh, the entire event actually was not as big as I expected, which I really liked. It was, um, it was very like, close-knit. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the event space was relatively small. It was beautiful. It was like an equestrian space and that was sort of their whole theme. Um, it was absolutely beautiful and the people were amazing. So uh, I loved the booths. They had some amazing vendors there. They were just wonderful. Their displays were gorgeous. I hope to get my stuff in there one day to be at that, at that league because it was, yeah, it was next level. It was so inspiring and uh, everybody was in such good spirits. I think everybody was just so excited to be back. Everybody who's been before. Yeah, I actually had a couple of viewers come up to me at different times and that was really cool. Everybody was so kind. I had one viewer in particular and if you're watching this you should leave me a comment um, because you were so so sweet and she was absolutely beautiful. She had on this beautiful like purple beret and this very fluffy cardigan. It was purple and she had this beautiful like long dark brown hair. She just looked amazing and she was such a sweetheart. Um, she came over to say hello and, and yeah just lots of great memories to have been made and it was cool because I was in the first time slot as I was leaving and seeing all of the second time slot all those people lined up and just so excited because once you're in it you're so focused and you're enjoying yourself you almost forget like how much it took to get there and uh, yeah seeing all those people standing in line and just anticipating it it's like you get excited for them and so that was great um yeah just such a lovely experience uh i cannot wait to do it again woolens and nosh was there and i just think this was like the funniest thing or just really cool for her um woolens and nosh was there and they do self-striping sock yarn and I, by the time I got over to their booth, it was wiped out. It was crazy. I mean, she still had some inventory, but the I think people were basically just running up and grabbing the first thing and then getting in line. And she had the longest line. I mean, her line was going like to the end of the tent. It was nuts. Um, but I got my favorite colorway, the one that I thought was most beautiful and, and they had plenty. So, you know, it was, it was fine. It was just really funny and I was happy for her, but um, I was wondering if she was going to have enough inventory for the whole day. It was, it was cool. It was really cool. 
but yeah, um, I think my other favorite booth, I had two, um, Lambstrings was amazing, and I bought some stuff from them, and uh, they were really sweet, and then Idlewild, which I'd never heard of, but they were unique in the sense that they were there selling handmade buttons, and I wasn't really in the market for that, and uh, my husband is going to be making those soon, so initially I kind of walked past, and I was, I was thinking, like, this is beautiful, but I only had an hour and a half, so I was really looking for yarn, but on my way out, I was like, okay, husband, Jason, <laughs> we can go, and of course he's like, oh, thank goodness, but we're on our way out, and I saw at the bottom of her booth, she had these beautiful, like, very rustic looking skeins of yarn, and so, you know, I ran over there with excitement because my favorite kind of yarn is, I really like undyed yarn that very much looks like breed specific and you know it this was exactly what I was hoping to find um, and I'll show you in the end she had these beautiful skeins of yarn and there was some brown yarn and some white yarn and when you picked it up it had a little tag that tells you the sheep that it came from which to me is such a and sort of like an emotional experience because it really it ties you very much to that that beautiful animal who um, has given this gift <laughs> That's how I see it. It's it's a gift. And, you know, I, I went to their website and was reading about, like, these sheep and their lives and how they all are very individualized. And that's what I love and that's who I want to support. So that was very exciting. And I bought some skeins from them. And uh, so, yeah, Indy was such a wonderful, wonderful experience. And then Saturday, New York Sheep and Wool. That was also amazing. That one was much different than Indian Tangled. Yeah, again, I've never been. It was way, way bigger than I expected by a long shot. If you've gone, you know what I mean. If you haven't, I don't think all the videos that I've watched over the years in preparation and excitement could have prepared me for what this was actually like. It was really not what I expected, but um, it was amazing. It really is, you know, it's at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. And it really is like fairgrounds. You enter through this massive like fairgrounds food court and then there's all kinds of, you know, long stalls and tents set up. And some of them were for the animals, which was, which were my favorite. Um, there was one that was for, for the, it's like an auction house. That was my husband's favorite. That one was really fun, especially when they got the auction going. They had all kinds of really beautiful old spinning wheels and and yarn and other kinds of stuff in there that you could sign up to bid on. Anyway, it was just, it was massive and it was very exciting. And everybody who was there, they were, you know, everybody was so, again, just delightful. <laughs> it was really amazing. Um, I got to meet so many different breeds of sheep that I've never seen in person before. And all of the caretakers that were with the sheep uh, were amazing people. I talked to somebody specifically from, I think it was the Gotland Sheep Society. Is what they're called and she was so informative and very like generous with her knowledge and her time because my husband and I have been considering getting sheep of our own but of course in Alabama it's not as it's not as simple as just getting sheep I want to make sure that we're getting breeds that are going to be um, you know suitable for this climate and I also want to learn how to take care of them and to share them myself and and all of that before we get them but the the sheep were so so cute and yeah I've got some footage of them to show in the end um oh the one thing that you have all been wondering because I've gotten plenty of messages about this I did meet Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready and they were just as sweet as you could imagine they were um yeah so so nice they were over on the hill and I saw them um and I decided to go over there and bother them <laughs> and uh yeah they were very like gracious and and very sweet and uh, if you watch my last episode I think I mentioned that I was jealous of their drive and they did confirm that they only had to drive like an hour so I'm still jealous of their drive but that was cool getting to meet them they were they were as sweet as you would think okay so I guess I'll go ahead and show you what I got this video is going to be probably pretty long I should have prefaced that um, but if you're still here then you know what this is about so you're in for it anyway so first, in the Untangled bag, I did get two of these. So I've got one in the background 
because my husband and I both had the uh, the tickets for the first time slot that uh, got you the bag and sort of like the other stuff that came with it that was really cool. Um, so yeah, this was this was worth it. I was very excited about this. I love the artwork as always. It's so cute. So this is from 29 Bridges Studio hand dyed yarns. And um, I got one of these in each bag with different colorways. So they included some stitch markers, metal stitch markers. That's probably really reflecting the light, but it says 29 Bridges, it's their logo. And then some, uh, some little rings, some stitch marker rings. And they also included a mini. This is the colorway Hot Metal. It's called a go-to sock mini. It's 75% merino, 25 nylon. There's 20 grams and 92 yards. So yeah, it's, it's like a silvery gray color, definitely a gunmetal color. And this is cool because I never have minis. I dye them, but I don't keep them for myself really. And uh, so this will be fun to play with adding some accents to my socks. So this is the 29 Bridges set that I got in my other bag. <laughs> yeah, my husband got a bag. I got two bags. I don't know what he would do with this, but this is the one that I got in my other bag. And this colorway is Little Miss Sunshine. It's the same uh, details as far as weight and everything goes, but it's a golden yellow. So it's very pretty. Very soft too. Um, yeah, this is a very soft nylon blend base. And then these were all, these were all vendors who were there at India Untangled, which was cool. It's like a, sort of like a little sampling of some of their, their items. Um, they included a coupon code, which is really nice. And then I think this must be like a travel uh, tape measure. And it is, yeah. I love these. I carry one of these with me always. So this is great to have another one um, to put in some other project bags. So that is wonderful. Uh, Neutrino did these little cards in all of the bags and it says you're invited. So it comes with a Neutrino button. I got a lot of buttons on this trip that I did not unnecessarily seek out. They found me, it was great. Um, this is an invitation for their cast on party, which is October 26, 2021, 6 p.m. Easter. And it's a, it's a fur knit along that they have coming up, it looks like. These were some mini skeins that came in there from Yarn Over New York. This is the Times Square colorway. Again, 75% merino, 25% uh, nylon, 20 grams, 92 yards. Actually, this is, it says Enchanted State, so I'm wondering if Times Square is the base. I think Enchanted State might be the colorway name, but it's beautiful. So I have 40 grams of this. So yeah. it's got some indigo and blue and cream. And then this one is from Scratch Supply Co. For India Untangled, they included some stickers. I love this. Anything with birds, birds and yarn, beautiful. Um, a coupon code. A business card. Oh, this is amazing. So this is an enamel pin. So this one I think I'm very excited for. These are stitch markers from Birdie Parker Designs. They're fall themed. Very cute. I thought they were the same, but now that I'm looking, they're two different color ways. Uh, yeah, I'll wrap it up. That's basically all of the cute little things that, that came with the bags. Okay, time to get in to the most exciting part, which are the things that I I purchased and uh, I don't think that I went as crazy as a lot of other people did but I I definitely um, am stocked up for a while so I'll just put it that way um, yeah, I don't know where to start I guess I'll start with indie so here is my indie untangled purchase yep lots of good stuff in here so when I first went in the very first booth that I went to was a uh, lambstrings yarn and I bought something <laughs> immediately so uh, yeah I, I walked into India Untangled and immediately purchased something which did not happen the whole time but I was just smitten with 
everything about their brand and their yarn and I could not pass these up because I absolutely love mohair and I would rather buy it in person so I can really get a feel for the depth of color and these were stunning are stunning um, yeah you can see they're absolutely gorgeous so this is lamb strings this is their feather lace weight this is 75% fine kid mohair 30% mulberry silk uh, novelty lace 459 yards 250 grams and this is the click beetle colorway it is like a a brown red um, yeah it's it's gorgeous as you can see I want everything I own to be made out of nothing but this <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was on the hunt for some merino singles to pair with this because I definitely want this to be a sweater and I really could not come across anything that I thought would be a good, a worthy pairing. So I might have to check them out and see if they have a corresponding or a similar merino singles to go with this so I can make, um, yeah, something, something wonderful. So the next thing that I got was my Woolens and Nosh self-striping yarn. Uh, so cute. This is the sushi colorway. So I was, I mean, I literally walked up to the booth. I saw this and again, no hesitation, bought it. And I think it's because it was the first day. So I hadn't spent any money yet. So it was a little bit easier to just buy whatever I saw. So this is 90% superwash targi and 10% nylon three ply, 411 yards, 200 grams. Um, this is going to be really fun to knit with. She had, uh, they had sample sock knits of all the colorways, and this one was very striking. I love the, the color, so I'm looking forward to knitting with this one. And the next thing I got, I blame the, so the people at this booth were very sweet. Um, yeah, they, they did a lot of chatting with me, and... Uh, I, I liked this booth quite a bit. They had an amazing assortment and they had a, um, you'll see it in the end, I did take a clip of this. They had a sample knit up of Casa Pinka's uh, Power, pow, is it Powder Wrap or Power Wrap? It might be, I think it's Power Wrap. Um, it was so beautiful and it was knit out of the colorway that they had there. And I mean, I saw it and instantly was like, I'm buying the shawl quantity. It is gorgeous. So yeah, you'll see that at the end. But these, it's knit out of the Julie, Julie Aslin uh, Nurtured yarn. This is 100% uh, fine wool. It's Rambouillet, Targi, and Merino. These are 56 gram skeins, which are 130 yards. And this colorway is called Leaf Pile. So I bought seven of them because that's how many it takes to knit the Power Wrap by Casa Pinka. And uh, as, so the person at the booth and I were discussing how this is the perfect brown because it's it's not quite pink and it's not quite brown and this is everything I love in a, in a color and in a wool. Everything about this is stunning. I cannot wait to have the finished object, especially having seen it in person. This is going to be my next knit. So yeah, lots of shawls uh, on the horizon for me still. But yeah, there is a close up of some of those flecks of different colors. I think this is definitely one of my favorite purchases. It's definitely the perfect pink brown. So I made one other purchase from Indy and these were the skeins I was mentioning earlier from Idlewild. So these came from a sheep named Pepper. And to me, that is just incredible. So I bought three skeins of uh, Pepper's wool. And so I was reading on their website about Pepper. And uh, it, so there were kind of two different color options from Pepper. And I liked this one better. It has these strands of, of gray in there. So I was reading that they have a batch from Pepper's youngest years. And those are solid brown and they were gorgeous. Um, and then these ones with the flecks of gray were from Pepper's older years, which to me is just so indicative of like the, the character and the love and care that goes into um, sh like shepherding and 
uh, raising these animals. I just think that's beautiful. Um, and it does still have some hay in there, which, yeah, always is very adorable and, and delightful to me. If it'll, there we go. But yeah, so I can't wait to knit these. I'm still trying to pick what I'm going to do. It's kind of looking like maybe a shawl <laughs> is in the horizon once again. Um, so these are sourced from Spindle Hill Farm. They are 100% Navajo churro. That's this sheep. I was reading about that breed and it's pretty fascinating about how it's a, um, a heritage breed and uh, you should definitely read. I might even do a video about different breeds of sheep if anybody's interested because I know it's captivating to me and I think it's kind of important to know the depth of your craft and again these beautiful animals that are giving you this gift. So this is Pepper's uh, lovely wool. And that was everything I got from India Untangled. Well, as you likely know, you cannot go to India Untangled in Sagar Tees without then visiting the Perfect Blend Yarn and Tea Shop. And again, this was my first time visiting. It was amazing. There was a line out the door. They were trying to limit how many people came in at once. And uh, so you kind of had to wait, uh, not, not super long. It was worth it. And everybody was outside knitting and chatting. Uh, but it was so much fun and it was so so crowded that I really don't feel like I I probably just bought I just like I think I was looking for a long time and then eventually I felt like I'm not going to be able to go back and forth to compare like if you were just at a yarn store perusing taking your time so when I got to the second room where the cash register is I was kind of like these look good I'm gonna buy a slighter quantity of these yarns and do see they put in a uh, business card with a, a coupon code on there and a little sachet. Oh, it smells like lavender. Very nice. So I got what is hopefully a sweater quantity of Kelborn Woolens Scout Yarn. So I got four skeins of this gray colorway. These are uh, 100% wool, they're 274 yards, 100 to 100 grams. They are uh, size 3, they're light, um, 20 to 22 stitches is the gauge. So yeah, I got four colors of Scout Gray Heather for 058. They seem very nice and plush, so I'm really excited to work with these. Um, I think this will be very pretty. And then I intend to do color work with these. So as my accent skein, I got the color Scout 602 Mulberry Heather. 602 Mulberry Heather. And this one is like a plum purple. So I think this will be a really pretty accent when I do some color work. It'll be very like icy looking and I think good for winter. So yeah, I'm excited about these ones. I, had, I do have some patterns in mind. I kind of need to see if, if I have enough. So, yeah, that was that whole day of yarn. Then, Saturday, it was time for New York Sheep and Wool. I purposely limited myself. Um, I'm not saying that this is a limitation by any means, but again, I, I think I did okay with being reserved. I, I was, we were there for like, I don't know, six hours or so. I didn't buy a single thing for hours like when we first got there so so that's you know I did a good job managing myself because there was so so much just beautiful fiber and yarn and handmade goods uh, it's very hard to be <laughs> responsible so the first thing that I got when I was there is a sweater quantity from Green Mountain Spinnery this is their weekend wool it is two ply worsted weight 100% American wool 140 yards and uh, the closest thing I can kind of compare this to that I think about is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. So if you have encountered that or worked with that, this is very similar. This is the chestnut colorway and I really could not decide between this chestnut and uh, the pumpkin colorway. And uh, again, I've got footage of that later. Pardon me wishes I would have gotten pumpkin, but I was wearing my all host sweater that day and it was golden and I was holding the, up the pumpkin and I thought, I don't have a red sweater yet, so I should I should make a red sweater. So yeah, I got six skeins of this. Um, it's so, so beautiful. I think it's slightly darker in person, but it has lots of multicolored flecks in there. And 
yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this. It, it's very like lightweight and uh, I think this will make a beautiful project. Um, I was thinking about doing a Felix again, but I I already have two, so um, I might try to branch out and try out a new pattern, or I might do the Felix cardigan. I haven't decided. Uh, so I do, I love these, they're gorgeous. So the next thing I got was a drop spindle, which I am so excited about. I have been wanting to learn how to spin for uh, years now, I guess, and so I think this will be a fun start. There were a lot of amazing um, e-spinners and uh, travel wheels and all kinds of beautiful beautiful stuff i actually was going to buy an e-spinner but uh, and they were so sweet at their booth they let me try it out so that was my first time spinning and uh i loved it so i was going to buy one and their card reader was down and uh then i had trouble later on like getting back there to get one so i'm hoping to still maybe get an e-spinner soon but for now i'm going to learn how to spin I guess conceptually on a drop spindle and this one is called a uh, unicorn spindle I think is what they're calling it it's like these acrylic resin looking um, wheels here I do have footage of these later it was really hard to pick because there were some beautiful ones but I ended up with this peach and pink one and so I'm extremely excited to learn how to do this I'll probably be picking this up this weekend to give it a shot. And of course, you can't spin without fiber, so I bought some fiber. And there was so much beautiful fiber that I desperately wanted to get, like all kinds of breed specific, soft, beautiful, undyed, like just gorgeous stuff. But um, I kind of wanted to practice and save my money and my time for those sorts of things for later. So I ended up going with some, some beautiful fiber from Wellspring Farm. And I think they were actually, I think they're actually based in North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina. So they're kind of in the South like I am. And uh, she was very sweet. And again, a, a wonderful person to talk to in terms of knowledge about raising sheep. So yeah, she was offering these big bags of fiber that were discounted. Um, so I thought I would go with this. So this would normally have been $35 worth of fiber, but she was selling it for 40% off, uh, or $21, which I thought was a good deal for, for learning. So these are all Wellspring Fiber Farm, um, but they're interesting. They're different fiber contents. So this one is the Patty Cake colorway. It's 100% wool, and it's two ounces. This is like a, it's like a purple and gray and blue. So I think this one will be really fun to play with and see how this one, um, how this one spins up. So then this one is Fine Wool and Llama, two ounces. This one doesn't seem to have a colorway name, but it's definitely softer than that wool I just had. So this one will be fun. I think I'll get some interesting colors out of here. And then I got this I'll probably ply with something else. The colors don't really like jump out at me on their own. I think my husband would enjoy this, but this is fine wool and merino. Uh, again, two ounces. So this one's like a, it's like browns and greens and reds. So there's lots of really interesting colors in here. Um, again, I think this will look really cool when it's plied up and there's still little hay bits and whatnot in there. And this one is Tunis, which is a breed that uh, I'm very interested in because apparently they do well in the South. Um, so this is the kind of wool that they produce. So this is two-way swirl is what it says. It's pink and purple. Tunis sheep. Yep, I can't wait to do this one. And finally, the most exciting to me, this is just llama, just some undyed llama. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so that's everything I got from Rhinebeck and India Untangled. Um, on our drive home, we did stop in Charlotte, North Carolina to stay the night. And 
We did go to Charlotte Yarn, which is the local yarn store there. I met the owner, she was incredibly sweet. Again, everybody I met this whole trip was just amazing. And uh, because I hadn't already acquired enough yarn, apparently, I did make a little purchase from her. So I got some La Bienna May. I was going to get just one, um, and then I really couldn't pick between the two, and I thought these would look amazing together. So I'll probably need a third skein at some point of another colorway and make another shawl, uh, to make another shawl. But yeah, I, I couldn't pass these up. I've never purchased Lobby and May, and they're, they're really beautiful. So this one is Merino Super Sock, and the colorway is Tanyo Pea, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's how you say it, or something close to that. It, it sounds kind of, it looks like tangerine. And then this one is Fiori. So these obviously play very well together. So I'm going to enjoy knitting these. Um, oh, and how could I forget? Probably one of my most exciting purchases from Rhinebeck is not wool or yarn or fiber or anything related to that. Um, when we were there, again, it was so huge. We kind of went straight back toward like the white tents that we saw because we assumed that's where everything was and we bypassed the whole front part until we were on our way out and because we kind of looked into this what looked like a main hall but when you first look in you there's only food vendors and like specialty foods and um, they have wine and different stuff and it turned out I should have started there because they had some amazing booths in there like Miss Babs and a couple of others that I had no idea were there the whole time um, and by the time we got in there close to on our way out it was so packed I couldn't even get close to the Miss Babs stall so I just I just said everybody else can have it um but when you first walk in again I did this they had a maple vendor right there and she was sampling out this pure maple cream it's like creamed maple syrup and uh this is like my favorite thing that I bought this is from Bennett's Maple Products um, they're in Glen Falls, New York. Pure maple cream. Uh, it's delightful. You can make this at home if, if you feel like it, but it's wonderful. The texture is so good. So yeah, this is amazing. I'm, I'm scared to even open it because I want to just like eat it by the spoonful and that would be bad. So I have to, again, show some self-restraint. <laughs> but I just, yeah, I just wanted to say one more time, if I met you at in New York, if I if we met or if you were a viewer and you came up and saw me, it was such a pleasure to meet all of you and to get to know you and I really cannot wait until next year. Um, it was such an incredible experience. If you have the chance to go, I say do it, uh, make it happen. It was so worth it. Um, the most exciting thing about my business updates, I completely forgot to share. Do you see this? <laughs> These are labels. These are uniform pretty labels that I finally took the time to uh, sort of template and create today and let's see I'll show you so this is my it has my logo on it now I think this is looking really good it looks a lot more professional I think and uh, I love the way that it looks going across the yarn wall it's very uniform and yeah, I'm just very excited. So I'm in the process of transitioning all of my labels over to this instead of the handmade ones. Um, there's still a handmade element, but it was really time consuming to uh, to create every label, and I think this looks better. So, so yeah, um, check me out on Instagram and on Etsy, and please subscribe if you would care to do so. Um, I will be back probably next week with another video. Uh, yeah, enjoy my Rhinebeck footage. Bye, everybody. Where are we going? Tragedy of Darth Vegas the Wise.
We're checking in. I need to get untangled. Amazing. There were a million people there and everybody was excited to see each other. Got a lot of compliments on my sheer bee sweater and Jason got called a good yarn husband. One cool vendor that they had had yarn from sheep that I guess that she raises uh, I think on the Blue Ridge Parkway. <laughs> it's the the yarn comes from a sheep whose name is on the yarn? How do you put that? You, you know the name of the sheep that the yarn came from. <laughs> so I got yarn from Pepper. Sparkles. Pepper. The other one was Ernest. <laughs> Nothing. Sheep and wool. some sheep. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> He's like, I don't want you to touch No head touches. No head touches. <laughs> Which color I like better? 
What do you think? Line of all of Rhinebeck, the falafel line. Just walk through a pretty crowded area, and this is what Jason decides to eat. And it definitely looks like roving. And the woman said, "You've got to get your fiber somehow." What's that? Oh, we're recording a video, but thank you so much. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. day of our trip. Rhinebeck was amazing. We are stopping in Charlotte, North Carolina for some vegan donuts and one more yarn store and that is Charlotte Yarn. So this is a yarn tour. <laughs> Which one are you trying? Bourbon one. Of course. Lemon poppy seed, peanut butter and jelly, Oreo, raspberry filled, glazed, cinnamon maple bourbon, and Jason. I'm not on the menu. <laughs> Is your mediocrely hot coffee? It's uh, blood temperature. Mm. Is mediocrely drink. a word? They don't drink hot coffee in the north. We're not in the north. This is North Carolina. <laughs> 